Math 1. This lesson is on 4.5 intro to angles. Um, anytime you go into any type of trade, one of the most important things to know and understand is the concept of an angle, right? And that's what we're going to start our discussion on today is what is an angle, what makes up an angle, and how do we measure it? So an angle is formed by two rays with the same end point. So when I look at this um, angle over here, this little arc here tells me that's the angle, and the shared endpoint here is W. When I look at W, WV is a ray, and WX is a ray. So that angle is created by two rays with a shared endpoint. Now you have to understand that the rays make up the sides of the angles, and that that shared endpoint right here, right, is called the vertex. Now, anytime we measure an angle, we measure an angle in degrees. All right, so how wide does that angle open is measured in degrees. The symbol for an angle is basically just like a little angle symbol. Now, when we name an angle, we can name it three different ways. Okay. The, the first way is the way that we can name it all the time, and it's using three points with the vertex in the middle. So right now, if I called, if I say W is the vertex, if I were to trace this angle from V to W to X, that's exactly how I would name it, right? So I could name this angle V, W, X, or I can go the other way, start at angle or at X, go to W, and then end up at V. The most important part is to know and understand that my vertex has to be in the middle. Okay. Now, another way is using the vertex, right? And this is only possible if there's only one angle at the vertex. So right now, there's only one angle at this, or one vertex at this angle, right? Therefore, we can name that just angle W. Last is using a number, right? That number there does not have a degree symbol, but using a number, right, without a degree symbol. Generally, those numbers would be like less than 10, right? So if you have an angle one, an angle two, an angle three, that's kind of the common, you know, thing that we see. So right here, for an example of, of getting used to naming, name angle one using three points. If I highlight angle one, this here is angle one. And if I had to trace it, notice the two rays that it touches. It touches this ray and it touches this ray. So when I name it, what has to be in the middle? My vertex there is B. So I'm gonna name this angle ABC. Or I could also name it angle, I could start at C, go to B, and then A. Now, I can name, <clears throat> next is to name angle 2, right? Well, here is angle 2. If I look at the rays that make that up, this ray and this ray make that angle up. What's the vertex of that angle? That vertex is also B, right? So how would I trace this angle? I would start at either C or D. So I'd go angle C, trace it down to B, and then end up at D. And if I trace this, and this is the key part, if you trace it in the order in which you name it, you should highlight the angle. If I start at C to B to D, what is this alligator eating? Angle 2. That's how I know I named it right. Now we have types of angles here, right? <clears throat> so when we look here, an acute angle is basically an angle whose measure x would be greater than 0 but less than 90. So it's basically an angle whose measure is between 0 and 90 degrees. Now you guys know a right angle, right? If I look at a right angle, that's almost like where the wall meets the floor, you know that that angle is always going to be 90 degrees. 
So a right angle is exactly 90 degrees. Next, we have an obtuse angle. An obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees. What we say is that measure x would be greater than 90, but less than 180 degrees. I should put the degree symbols here. But then we have a straight angle. If you have a straight line, if I look, this is a straight line. And if you have an angle that starts on this line and ends on the same line, right? That angle is a straight angle or 180 degrees. That's going to be very important down, down the line. All right. Now, the whole idea of understanding angles is knowing how to measure them. We generally measure an angle with a protractor. All right. And if you look, all the numbers on there represent the number of degrees. But if you look, there's a number on bottom and a number on top. And we're going to talk about how we use that. So how do we measure an angle with a protractor? Well, first off, you want to identify is your, ang is your angle acute or obtuse? So when I look at this first angle, what we're going to do is if you look, the vertex, there will always be a hole for the vertex of the angle to, to go on. Then there's always a line, and if you can see here, a line right here that we line up one edge or one ray on. Now when we line that up, what happens is the other ray will come through here like such. Now if I look at this angle, does this angle look like it's more than 90 degrees or less than 90 degrees? It looks like it's less than 90 degrees. Therefore we know this angle is going to be an acute angle. So when I go to measure it, what I'm going to look at or look for is I see that this, and I'm actually going to erase this portion. What I'm going to do is look, where does this line cross here? Now, we know that line is between 60 and 70 and then 110 and 120. But how do I know which one to use? If it's an acute angle, you're going to use the numbers that are lower than 90, or the bottom numbers. So here, we're between 60 and 70, so that right there, this angle would be about 65 degrees. Okay. So let's look at a couple other examples, right? I know this isn't the easiest to read, but try your best. But I line my vertex up here, one side of the angle here, and if I follow this other angle up, it's right here. And if I look, this angle, is this acute or obtuse? It's less than 90, therefore it's acute. So I know I'm going to use the smaller numbers. So we go from 50 to 55 to 60. So this angle measure would be 55 degrees. The next one, again, vertex of the angle. I line up one edge of the angle along this line. And if I look here, where does this line cross? This crosses right about here. But now, if I look at this angle, this angle is obtuse. It's more than 90, right? So what numbers do I use here? I'm going to use the bigger numbers. So if I go from 120, Right to 130, I know I'm going to be about 120, but then I got to count one, two, three. This is about 123 degrees. Okay. Now, right now, you guys don't have protractors. Um, you know, we'll, we'll go through these in class one day, um, but we're going to move on to the angle addition postulate. This is no different than the segment addition postulate, but all you have to understand is angle ABC, which is this angle here, plus angle CBD. If I take those two angles and combine them, what angle is created? This angle here. And how would we name that angle? 
we would start at A, we'd go to B and go to C or D. So this would add up to angle A, B, and D. So that there, right, this angle one and angle two add up to angle A, B, D. So when we look here, the next diagram has a bunch of different angles in it. So if we look at angle one, right, here's angle one. If I had to trace that angle, I would start at A, I'd go to the vertex P, and then E. So I could name this angle A, P, E. I could also name it, if I wanted to, angle E, P, A. Doesn't matter which way you go, right? The only thing that matters is the vertex P is in the middle. Now if I took angle 2 and angle 3 and add them together. So here's angle 2, here's angle 3. If I put those together, I get this big angle here. How would I name that? I would name it E, P, G. So angle E, P, G. Or... I can go ahead and name it angle G, P, E. All right. Now, if I took angle 6, 7, and 1. So if I took angle 6, angle 7, and angle 1 and combined them, I'd get this big angle here. If I had to trace that angle, it'd be angle. It would go from N to P to E. And that's exactly how I name it, angle N, P, E, or angle E, P, N. So naming these using the addition is critical, right? Now, the reason we cannot use the just the vertex there is simply because, right, um, there are, there is more than one angle at that vertex. So here, we want to find the measure of angle A, B, C. And guys, I'm going to tell you, trace the angle, angle A to B to C, and then draw an arc in the middle. What would I do with these two angles? I know angle ABD plus angle DBC, right? Angle ABD plus DBC adds up to angle ABC. So I know right away that this is this angle is 45 degrees plus this angle is 60. What does that give me? 105 degrees. But now the next one, when we look at this, angle SQR is 20 degrees. S Q R, right, is 20 degrees. Now that's a small angle, but the next one, they tell you angle P Q S. P to Q to S, which is this big angle here, is 160 degrees. Well, if these overlap, I know right away that I'm going to subtract that. So this is going to be 160 degrees minus 20 degrees. So PQR, you have to understand, is going to be this angle here, okay? So what I do is I take that big angle, subtract the small angle, and I get 140 degrees. Example 6, find the measure of angle DEF. Well, if I look here, angle D from D to E to F, that starts there, ends there. What am I going to do with 60 and 120? I'm going to add them. 60 plus 120, that's 180 degrees or a straight angle. Now, using that same idea, find the angle of Q, N, M. From here to here to here, which is this angle here. That's the one I'm looking for. What you have to understand with this problem is from here all the way to here, that's 180 degrees. So if these two angles, right, this angle and this angle, have to add up to 180, I know 180 minus 110 is 70 degrees. Okay. The next one. 
when I look here, anytime you see this symbol, right, that box, that box tells you that this whole angle is from here to here is 90 degrees. So that box, right, means a right angle. So if this is 40, what would this angle have to be in order for these two to add up to 90? Well, if I take 90, subtract 40, I know it would have to be 50 degrees. And that would give me the measure of angle H, 2J, 2L. Next one. Angle HID is 48 degrees. So that's 48 degrees. DIJ is 120 degrees. So these are two small angles. What would I have to do with these two angles to get the measure of angle H? I, J, I'd have to add them together, and 120 plus 48 is 168 degrees. Okay, number 10, angle A, B, C is a right angle. So right away, if this is a right angle, oh, let me do that in a different color. If this is a right angle, I know that's 90 degrees. Therefore, we know angle 1 plus angle 2 has to add up to 90 degrees. Well, if angle 1 is 3x plus 4, plus angle 2 is x plus 6, has to add up to 90 degrees. So 3x plus x is 4x. 4 plus 6 is 10. Remember, I have to combine like terms. Now I can go ahead, subtract 10. 4x equals 80. When I divide by 4, x is equal to 20. So right there, if x is equal to 20, I know angle 1 is 3x plus 4. So I know 3 times 20 plus 4 would give me 60 plus 4, which is 64 degrees. That would be the measure of angle 1. Now the next one. If I look at angle ABC, right, angle ABC is 3x plus 8, and angle CBD is x plus 4. When I look at these two angles, it, this starts on this and ends on this line, which means that's 180 degrees or a straight angle. Therefore, I know that these two angles will add up to 180 degrees. So 3x plus 8 plus x plus 4 equals 180. Add these together, I get 4x plus 12, combine like terms here, equals 180. Subtract the 12, and I get 4x equals 168. When I divide by 4, x is equal to 42. Now if x is equal to 42, to find the measure of angle ABC, that's 3x plus 8. So if I say angle ABC is going to be 3 times 42 plus 8, which is going to give you 126 plus 8, which is 134, oh, 134 degrees. And last, they tell you angle MAR, right? is 124 degrees. So from there to there is 124 degrees. They want us to find x in the measure of angle max. So right here I know that these two angles, 6x minus 11 plus this angle, 4x minus 25, has to add up to 124 degrees. Now I can combine like terms. 10x minus 36 equals 124. I'm going to go ahead, add 36. 10x equals, that's going to give you 160. When I divide by 10, I get 16. Therefore, if x is 16, now angle MAC, right, is 6 times x minus 11. So now I'm going to plug x in. 6 times 16 minus 11 will give me 
6 times 16 is 96. 96 minus 11 is 85 degrees. And we are done. All right. So, guys, you have to know what adds up to 90, what adds up to 180, and what an angle addition represents. All right, go ahead, try the homework on page 27 and 28, and let me know if you have any questions.